One in three adults in the United States are obese. Um, pizza paste is considered a vegetable. Just learned that yesterday. Um, ob obesity is on the rise. And only about 5% of adults, you know, our age into about 70, um, get more than 30 minutes of exercise a day. That's according to the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition in 2010. Um, I was really surprised by some of these stats. I don't know, I think 5% is surprising. Really, 30 minutes, that doesn't seem like much. Um, I'm gonna examine what we can do about this and why specifically the United States' eating habits are so poor, considering we are such a rich and developed, educated country. Okay, so some uh, healthy eating statistics. Uh, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports a 36% obesity rate. So that's roughly, yeah, 36% of all adults in America are obese. Um, that seems like a lot to me. I don't know. I was thinking there's more like 10%, like one out of every 10. Um, youth obesity rate is 17%, and that's according to the Center for Disease Control as well, uh, 2011 to 2014. Um, that's about half of what an adult is. But then you got to think that a lot of their um, nutrition choices are given to them by their adult guardian. So it's a little surprising that already before the age of, I think it's 18, they're obese. Um, uh, yeah, obesity is the most neglected public health issue and it is preventable. That's kind of the sad part of it, it is preventable. Um, obesity causes hypertension and diabetes. Um, that is according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and then obesity severely impacts the U.S. economy. Um, approximately $147 billion per year is just spent on just being too fat. <laughs> uh, current eating habits. Um, so children spend seven and a half hours a day looking at a screen. That actually sounds a little low. I don't know about you guys. Look at your phone and everything. Um, only six states require physical education. And just a little heads up, it is not Oregon. Oregon is not in that group. Um, I was a little appalled by that, honestly. I think it's very important to have physical education. And then 27% of young adults are too overweight to still serve in the military. So say we did have World War III or something, um, roughly one out of every four people that are old enough to serve would not be able to because they were too fat or too unhealthy. Um, school lunches, I think it's important to look at school lunches as kind of a key to show that children are um, not adequately um, getting the right nutrition in their lunch, which which uh, eventually results in adults being too, too um, unhealthy to control their own eating habits. Um, that is according to fitness.gov resource center in, uh, I believe, 2009. Um, National School Lunch Act, that's what 99% uh, of schools adhere to, um, which guidelines what they put in their food. 90% uh, of students eat lunch at school. Seems about right. Um, average school lunch in 2009 contained 1,375 milligrams of sodium, which is twice as much as federal guidelines. So, they, so it's roughly like two days worth of salt every day. Um, also schools purchase more than $450 million worth of pizza at lunch for a year for lunch. I had a lot of pizza when I was young too, it was great. But then again, that's not something that's going to get me to go out uh, to PE, which I don't even have to go to anymore. Um, school lunch, yeah, 40, 50% of calorie intake for the day for the kids. Um, and 90% of parents think the school food is healthy. That's according to HBO's uh, documentary, Weight of a Nation, uh, which was surprising to me. I assumed that parents probably know that it's unhealthy, it's just cheaper. Um, this is just kind of a cool graphic to look at. I can't really verify how accurate it is, but it does look really cool. It's from the Daily Mail article. Um, so USA is a little bit left there. You know, tater tots, or actually chicken nuggets there. You know, um, I just thought like Finland looks pretty cool, so does Italy. Just looking at how diverse their meals are, and kind of looking at how they um, kind of address the children's needs in the you know K through 12. That's true. Nice. Um, and then there's there's politics involved in this. Eating eating healthy is not just as simple as it seems, even though it is pretty simple. Um, kind of like healthy eating is and uh, consumerism is more like public safety. So yeah, if the food's unsafe, you're probably not gonna eat it. Well, unless we don't know that. Um, product liability laws, a lot of times they don't put things in or leave things out because they don't want to get sued. Um, buyer preferences, which is, shows that we have a lot of power over stopping stuff like this by just not buying it. Um, yeah, Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign did really help out. Uh, some of the lunches were negatively affected. Uh, you know, uh, reform is always tough. Um, and also industries fight any proposed changes to, to the law. During uh, Obama's administration, 
and Michelle, they really tried to focus on this and they found a lot of backlash, a lot of pushback from the food industry, which kind of has monopoly over what students eat. Considering 90% of students eat food at uh, school every day, um, to, tomato paste is a vegetable. I, that seems just ridiculous to me. It shows that lobbyists are in there and rather than just common sense. Why are we eating a bunch of tomato paste? I don't know. But that was a way to justify why pizza is always on the menu. You know, pizza Friday, pizza Monday. That's just because they need potato paste. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, lobbyists, yeah, are not consumers, decide school lunches. It should be, um, when you think about it, teachers, parents, as well as just people who care going into deciding what children eat rather than just lobbyists that want to make a buck. Um, so also a healthy weight in general for even adults. Um, some solutions, a healthy lifestyle is about healthy eating, obviously. Um, getting regular physical activity, that's important. Uh, walk when you can, um, like on campus, to just be going around. Um, and, and if you're older and have a job, maybe get a little exercise in the morning before you go to work. Um, balancing the number of calories you consume with the number of calories your body uses. So if you're not doing anything all day, probably not a great idea to eat a bunch unless it's Thanksgiving. Um, eat smaller portions, which means that yeah, you can have three to four meals a day if they're uh, less calorie dense, rather than eating 2,000 calories in one sitting. Then yeah, you probably shouldn't eat till the next day, because that's a lot of calories. Um, build exercise in your daily life, like I said. Be creative with it. There's a lot of different things out there, and you can have a cookie or two now and then. It's just you can't eat it every day. Moderation is key. Um, help losing weight. So say you're a little unhealthy. Of uh, fad diets, don't try them because they will not. It won't work. It might work, but it, it will not be long term. And the statistics normally show that you gain it back in addition within the first six months. Um, yeah, you need healthy nutrients. Uh, limit sugars, cholesterol, salt, and saturated fats which can be done by just looking at the nu nutrients in um, what you're eating. And this is burn more calories than eat, which is, requires getting some exercise. Um, and then healthy food guidelines. Fruits of any kind are good. Vegetables of any kind are good. Try to find a lower calorie version. Um, yeah, like I was saying, a positive attitude, I like that one. So just smile and have a good time and you will be able to kind of fix any sort of negative eating habits that you do have. Um, so finally, a solution to this problem, benefits to why we're looking at this, is the American economy can save a bunch of money. Um, is this, if this is not solved, our life expectancy will continue to go down, which is pretty sad. Um, we will not have healthy individuals serve in the military. Um, continue to, yeah, so school lunches need to look at, and a productive society is not one that just decides they need to um, profit off of people eating a bunch of fatty foods and eating really fat. Um, here's how you can help. So eat foods that are produced in the way that you support. So don't buy things just because you're like, oh, I just want a bunch of Oreos, but they're not good for it or they're produced inhumanely. Let's start analyzing what you eat and try to only eat when you are truly hungry.